Will the market go up or down? Should you lock in or float? Find out this and more with Master of the Markets, hosted by Barry Habib of MBS Highway. Brought to you by United Wholesale Mortgage. Does your wholesale lender do this for you? Free customizable marketing materials, online loan tracking for your clients, returns your past clients to you, and complimentary client retention campaigns. Don't you think it's about time you found one that does? Partner with United Wholesale Mortgage and receive these benefits and more. Welcome to another edition of Master the Markets. I'm Barry Habib from MBS Highway, and this is created exclusively for Mortgage News Network. Crazy week we had last week. Nice improvement in interest rates. We saw interest rates decline, and I think that trend will continue into the early part of this week. We have all technical indicators pointing to some favorable conditions. We could see maybe that 10-year Treasury dip, drift down towards 202 or 203 from present levels. That would certainly be welcome for us, amount to about 40 or 50 basis points better in mortgage-backed security pricing. Now, with regards to what happens later in the week, well, it's jobs week, so that's going to fluctuate greatly dependent on how these jobs numbers come out. Now, there's some things to be concerned about here in that the job numbers are one of two things that the Fed is looking at with regards to hiking rates. One is the jobs numbers. They want to see that unemployment rate come more towards 5.1%. But the other is for inflation to move confidently, in their opinion, towards a 2% level. Here's the thing. When we talk about inflation, and we look at what the Fed's watching, they're watching things like the CPI, Consumer Price Index. They're also looking at another inflation gauge called the PCE, Personal Consumption Expenditure. And when they look at these numbers, there's two versions of it. There is what's called the headline number, which takes into account everything. And then there's the core number. The core number strips out food prices, and more importantly, in this case, strips out energy prices. You see, we know that barrel of oil price has come down significantly, so that has influenced that headline number to be extremely low. The Fed's kind of discounting that. So they're really just looking at this core rate of inflation because what that does is it kind of gives you a basket of prices and the change of those prices without that heavy influence from the drop in oil. Well, when we look at this, the current rate is 1.8% year over year. And they look at all the past 12 months and they kind of roll it. So we just got the number for the month of April that was released just a couple of weeks ago, I'm sorry, just last week. And once we get the number for the month of June, which will be for May's number, that will, what it will do is it will replace the May of 2014 number. So as each new number comes in for 2015, it replaces that corresponding month for 2014. So they look at 12 months. The reason I bring this up and something no one is talking about or even seeing is because as we take a look at the numbers that will begin to be replaced in 2014, as the new months come in, once we get to the month of June, and this will be released in July, the numbers for 2014 were extraordinarily low. So this year, when those numbers get replaced at probably significantly higher levels, it will, in my opinion, surprisingly push interest, push inflation to above 2%, Maybe by the end of the year, two and a half, two point six percent. I don't think anybody's envisioning that right now. Maybe this is one of the secret things the Fed is looking at when they say they think that there's going to be a rate hike that happens this year. Now, here's the interesting thing: the voting members of the Fed are mostly what you would call dubs. There's seven of these dubs, which they're all for accommodated policy. They're they're very flexible. They don't want to rush to high rates. There's two hawks which means they are more prone to want to see rate hikes to curb inflation, and there's one centrist. So we watch the people that actually are involved in what the Fed is doing from a standpoint of voting. And when we look at these voting members, these voting members right now are gonna probably have a tough time going and pulling the trigger on a rate hike unless they see some of this evidence. Here's the part that's really interesting. It's been a long time since the last rate hike. And typically, when the Fed hikes rates, we can see a rally, an improvement in interest rates on mortgages, an improvement in pricing on mortgages. This is the real key here, because if inflation starts to tick up and the Fed does not act, the bond market will take care of business and they will, the bond market will have to have higher rates. The reason for this, and here's what I want you to imagine. Imagine that 
you're the person who granted a mortgage. So you lent out the money and now what you get in return is you get a steady monthly payment, so fixed rate for 30 years. So you get that same exact monthly payment every month for 30 years. This month, if you took what you received in monthly payment from the person you lent the money to and you bought stuff with it, well, you could buy a basket of things, let's just say, the next month, probably pretty much the same. The following month, probably pretty much the same. But over time, because of inflation, the amount that you can purchase with that fixed amount of money starts to dwindle. It starts to erode because the effect of inflation makes things cost a little bit more over time. There's a problem with that, is that if inflation starts to move higher and higher, that erosion happens more rapidly and the buying power that you have every month diminishes more rapidly. So if you're going to lend out money, if you're going to invest in these bonds where you receive a fixed payment and inflation's high, you're gonna be less apt to do it unless you're compensated for this more rapid erosion. How do you get compensated for it? Well, you start off with a higher interest rate. You demand a higher rate to balance off that greater level of erosion. And that's why if the Fed doesn't hike rates, and we see inflation move up like I think we will into the fall, we will begin to see a problem from the Fed standpoint and that what do we do? And if they don't hike, interest rates will start to rise and probably rise to some, some level that's, I think, going to be a surprise to the markets. Now, interestingly, if the Fed does act and hike rates in an effort to curb inflation, well, what will happen from that point, in my opinion, is you could see a bond market rally because they'll be comfortable that inflation will be tamed. All right. If you want to stay on top of this, you want to stay on top of the jobs numbers, get yourself in position to not be hurt by reprices, protect your customers, and let them know what's going on every day. Click on the link and get a free subscription to MBS Highway. You know what to do. Talk to you soon. Have a great one. Bye-bye. Today's Master of the Markets was brought to you by United Wholesale Mortgage. This is Mortgage News Network.